it feels as the summer comes to an end that it's easy now to stop fighting, to stop asking for things from Biden, to stop expecting things from the Democrats, to lay low, to be patient and do what progressives in the Democratic Party since Clinton have been told to do. Wait, wait, wait. We, we need we need to defeat the fascists first. It's always something. Wait, wait. We're going to lose a year. We're, the election isn't it's more than a year away. And it feels, and maybe my, maybe I'm just, my perspective is distorted, but it feels to me like the progressives are just waiting a year, hoping the Democrats win back the House and Biden gets reelected. Once again, we're being told, wait until we defeat the fascists. And there's no question that the Republicans are fascists. But as the great professor Harvey J.K. has pointed out countless times on this show, Roosevelt defeated the fascist, but he also had time to introduce an economic bill of rights. Granted, it never got passed, but he didn't expect unions and the working people back home during the war to surrender all their New Deal gains to postpone things until we defeated Hitler. He knew that you could defeat fascists by creating an atmosphere back home where Americans are less susceptible to the charms of authoritarianism. I don't know if that's happening here in the United States. My perspective is a little distorted this morning, and I can't pretend the Republicans don't scare me. Uh, the Republicans scare me, but it's the American people who really, really scare me. I am worried that we have been so dumbed down and beaten, we lack the vocabulary to, pr to protect ourselves or to even know what we need to protect ourselves from. I look at the Republican Party. I see Trump running even with Joe Biden in the polls. How is such a thing possible? I read what people on the other side of the aisle truly believe to be true. And I think Medicare for all, income inequality, gun safety, climate change. Are you kidding me? Do you th honestly think we can tackle any of this? What? with what's staring at us across the aisle. It, it just seems today insurmountable. I've always believed as a class reductionist that most of these social issues like abortion, bigotry against people of color, the LGBTQ community, women, uh, bigotry against people who aren't Christian, I always believe that all that bigotry and that hate would lift if we gave everyone a, a fair shake, Medicare for all. You know, if we broke up the big monopolies, created better jobs, more competition, free tuition at all public universities, made it easier to unionize, you know, all the things that were in Bernie's Build Back Better, I, I believe that as the tide lifts all boats, a lot of the hatred would dissipate. And I believe that America's failure to provide a social safety net like that, that the failure to create strong unions, uh, for example, has given birth to the politics of resentment and rage that came to fruition during the Reagan administration. I mean, it really, that's when we saw it uh, really come together and materialize the, the politics of resentment and rage. It's always been there. Reagan used it like nobody has before. But now I'm worried that we're past the politics of resentment and rage. I think it, I think it worked up until 2016 and Trump 
and the MAGA Republicans with or without Trump, you know, Ron DeSantis, for example, there's now something else going on. Uh, there's a growing segment of our population, Republicans, that doesn't care about Social Security, Medicare, climate change, better schools. They don't care about anyone or anything. And the last thing they want is someone to try to make them care. I was watching Shane Gillis on Netflix, and this is a comedian who did some rancid jokes about Asians and was about to start uh, on Saturday Night Live. And if you watch what he said about Asians, you'd go, yeah. You're not welcome on network television. But now he has the number one uh, special on Netflix. And I watched it over the weekend. And he's he's brilliant. Uh, he's absolutely brilliant. And he's not backing down from uh, playing with that kind of fire. He's toned it down a little but. What I'm picking up from comics like Shane Gillis and a lot of these comedians who are Trump supporters, they are and their audiences are sick of caring about anything or anyone. It's funny to just stop caring about things. And that just that, that attitude isn't just comedy. It bleeds into our politics it's a complete surrender to any responsibility to others. And it's this feeling, and I just see it in red states. I see it at the Trump rallies. We're all going to die. There's nothing we can do about guns or big oil or climate catastrophe. So let's laugh at the woke mob for thinking they can actually fix things. It's a fatalism that... I've never witnessed before in my lifetime. You mix this in with religion and it's apocalyptic. There is this fatalism, this nihilism that is now a political ideology, even though I don't think the Republicans are aware how fatalistic they are. It's becoming pervasive on the right, which no longer stands for anything. It's now just leave me alone. You knock on my door. I don't know who you are. I'm firing my gun. Leave me alone. It's a type of isolationism. There's always been a strain of isolationism in the Republican Party among conservatives, but that had to do with Hitler and foreign intervention. Now it's an isolationism of do not knock on my door or I will shoot you. Leave me alone. Don't tell me what to do. Don't tell me how to live. Leave me alone. That's what I'm saying from the right and from Republicans more and more. The right used to stand for smaller government. Now it's about destroying government, destroying the entire system. Destruction is the point. Uh, enjoying the destruction is the point. Drive the hyper-educated professionals insane by your complete and utter lack of empathy or reason. They enjoy having no reason. Tear it all down and replace it with AR-15s. And if you knock on my door, I'm going to shoot you. I see it now when they talk about January 6th. Now, everyone knows what January 6th was, the same way everyone knows what the Civil War was. January 6th was an insurrection. Donald Trump ordered Mike Pence killed. But that's too hard for some Republicans, including Mike Pence. It's too hard for some Republicans who hold elective office to admit that to themselves, especially the ones like Kevin McCarthy, people who think they're still in this game. But when you go down the, the food chain in the Republican Party and get to Republican members of Congress who aren't committee chairs, who are just 
rank and file Republicans uh, who have no responsibility, they know exactly what January 6 was. And they're not just fine with it. They wish it had succeeded. Like the Southerners after the Civil War, Republicans lie to others and call January 6 something which everyone knows it wasn't. We all know what it was. And it defies reason to pretend otherwise. Everyone knows what the Civil War was. Now they go, no, that was about states' rights or preserving our way of life. Uh, no, we know what the Civil War was about. But that's part of the game that the South plays. And we see this with Republicans. They know what January 6 was. They get off on pretending it was something else. Here is Dan Bongino. I saw this last night. Oh, I can't play clips. Okay. Well, let me see. Will this play? No. Okay. I was going to play a clip of Dan Bongino. He's a former Fox News personality. He, uh, was a Secret Service agent and a cop. And I was watching his podcast on Rumble, and he just flexes his nihilism. He knows what January 6th was. His audience knows what January 6th was. And I was going to play you a clip where you can just, you just know that Don, ben, Bongino, Dan Bongino knows January 6th was a violent insurrection, but just deny it. Have fun denying it the same way it's fun to deny that the Civil War was about slavery. Own the libs by saying the Civil War was about states' rights. Own the libs by saying January 6th was just a protest that got out of hand, even though they know it was an insurrection. Uh, but they keep, they actually keep the attack on Washington, on our Capitol, going by denying that it was an insurrection, by trivializing it. I was going to uh, play you this clip, but my effing technology isn't working today. In the clip, Dan Bongino isn't trying to win any arguments. He doesn't care. He's, he talks about these AIDS activists who occupied Speaker McCarthy's office. I think it was on Monday. And they staged a peaceful protest. And if you look at the video, you can see McCarthy's workers just ignoring their chants and doing their work. And it was a peaceful protest. And they were prepared to get arrested for it. Uh, no violence. It's civil disobedience, right? Uh, Thoreau talks about civil disobedience. It's an, it's an agreement we make with our government. It's protesting that is a misdemeanor. It doesn't cross a certain line. Civil disobedience is what moves the needle towards social justice. You don't end a war. You don't get civil rights without civil disobedience. Peaceful civil disobedience. And the price you pay for your civil disobedience is a night in jail. It's nonviolent di civil disobedience. Far different from storming the Capitol with bear spray and zip ties and trying to hang Mike Pence, Nancy Pelosi, and committing millions and millions of dollars in damage to our Capitol. You watch this video and he immediately compares this peaceful protest to January 6th and Enrique Terrio getting 22 years. It defies reason, but he knows that. I wish I could show you this clip. He's just saying this to get a rise out of himself, to rile up his audience, and any libs who are stupid enough to watch this pus-filled pimple of hate, Dan Bongino. Uh, it's part of the nihilism. 
It's not about being right. It's not about being reasonable. It's about destruction. It's about riling up your base and driving reasonable people insane. And my answer to watching somebody like Dan Bongino is, okay, you're a cop. You're a Secret Service agent. You believe in law and order. So do I. And we need to start locking these people up for life. Not Dan Bongino, but the people he's protecting. They are criminals. And without Merrick Garland in the Justice Department, if we end up with another Bill Barr, another Republican attorney general, we can't lock these people up. Is this going to solve climate change? Will it raise children out of poverty? No. Can we do both at the same time? Can we arrest, keep arresting these insurrectionists and fix climate change? We should be able to, but I no longer have faith today in the American people. I'm worried that the American people have been dumbed down so much that we cannot chew gum and walk at the same time. Franklin Delano Roosevelt could chew gum and walk at the same time, and he was confined to a wheelchair. I don't think this country, I, I've, I have lost faith in the American people this morning. This morning. I'll get my faith back once my technology starts working again. I'll have faith in the American people. I am sitting on so much rage right now because I can't play these videos. I don't know if you can see, but uh, anyway. Uh, anyway, lawyers for Rudy Giuliani filed a motion on Tuesday uh, 